Hello, hello. Happy March 14th. Okie dokie. What's today? What's on the plate? Self-deception Self is on deception. the plate. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> Self-deception is our enemy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Diogenes. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce this name one of these days. I think that's good. It sounds good. Yeah. Diogenes. Zeno would also say that nothing is more hostile to a firm grasp on knowledge than self-deception. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, self-deception. Yes. Uh, I am not certain that I have a complete handle on what everything self-deception is. Mm -hmm. I have some ideas I can elaborate on, um, but I don't know that I've fully figured out mm -hmm. either in theory and definitely not in practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that I am uh, self-defeating myself by thinking that I know what my self-defeating tendencies are. Self-deceiving? <laughs> Self-deceiving? Self-deceiving. Okay, okay. Yeah. Self-deceiving myself by thinking you know what your self-deceiving tendencies are. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, I don't know, I That's heard... Sorry, yeah, that was a... Yeah, yeah. It makes sense, though. I mm -hmm. heard somebody on a podcast say, like, you... People think they question their beliefs except for the things they really believe, which they never think never, to question never at think all. Never think question. And then I was also... Um, hmm, uh, Sam Harris was talking about this on his podcast about like like when we we want to we want to question the self deceptions inside of us and then we get to some point where we're like oh like yeah I'm good like this is great right but there's he's saying like there's so that's like a tip of the iceberg yeah and it's like when you think that there's like nothing there anymore that's still the tip of the iceberg there's there's more self this like all kinds of weird stuff every day. We just like believe in things like, you know, I need to, you know, now it's time for this. And we just keep doing this and self deceiving ourselves that now it's time for a sugar candy or something, you know, right. whatever that is. Yeah. And, or other flavors of it. Like I have to yeah. do this. This is not possible for me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I don't deserve mm -hmm. this. Um, I mean, anything in that kind of territory mm -hmm. is definitely self-deception. -de I'm afraid because it's interesting because I'm afraid is like, it's like a feeling, but it's also, uh, uh, the feeling is, is created based on an idea that you believe in, that you are afraid of something. Like, something. You know, yeah. swimming, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and then when because it gets... the thought comes first and then the feelings come and then, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so in yeah. that way, self-deception is not just a mental process. It also has a, a bodily impact through the emotions. And that's what makes it so tricky because the emotions... A lot of times you notice your emotions first, mm -hmm. or uh, let me not say you, I notice mm -hmm. my emotions first, and then I can sort of figure out what kind of thoughts are generally around that emotion. Um, mm -hmm. But the emotions can't necessarily be argued with or negotiated with or um, put away. Like it takes a lot of time to, and investment to really understand what the emotion is and also mm. what the belief systems are that generate it. Mm. So this idea that like, I mean, uh, yes, self-deception is um, what enemy. he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah an enemy, yeah. exactly. Um, and it's also very difficult. It's like a lifelong pursuit mm -hmm. to really get to the bottom of it because of how much time it, an investment it takes yeah. and, and discipline it takes to really yeah. get to the bottom of this Yeah, it's stuff. like an onion or something and, and you keep peeling and peeling and peeling and there's more and more and more and you think like, oh my God, I'm in the center of this onion. It's like, nope, there's just, just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but that's you know that's also like I feel like when I'm working on that and when I'm trying to peel the next layer I'm, I'm almost like lost the like oh I want to get to some bottom like no I don't care I'm just okay I like I want to peel the next one like and that's I think the task yeah. is like learning how to be how to crave and be satisfied with that with the process mm -hmm. of never quite being finished mm -hmm. like you're never getting to the finished state hmm. because there I, I i see it as like uh, you gain self-knowledge not like knowledge from a book reading a book and then that book means something in your main, mind but this is like this is like like you take another layer off and now you know yourself better internally like who you are or something and it just like like why would why would I not want to pursue this? Like it's so of course I want to pursue this. Like I you know like knowing myself better. Like oh my god, yeah. I would f I'll fit in so much better with this whole thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> like actually you are a better <clears throat> fit for reality, mm -hmm. and because you're a better fit for reality, um, outcomes are better. Uh, you are able to more like direct. I, because you are focusing on the things that are within your mm. control and not focusing on the things that are outside of your control, uh, which has been a theme from the Stoics. Mm -hmm. And um, shoot, where was I going to go with that? Oh, like you're able to direct the outcome of things like more, like you're able to reach your goals um, more reliably. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Yeah. Things are yeah, trend. Yeah. Things will trend better for you. Yeah, or or maybe like you might see bigger percentages of the things that you want are being done or yeah. something, or you see them right. to completion or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whew, this one's cool so far. Yeah. Self-deception. Let's. Um, are you ready for Ryan? Mm -hmm. let's okay, let's do Ryan. Self-deception. Delusions of grandeur. These aren't just annoying personality traits. Ego is more than just off-putting and obnoxious. Instead, it's the sworn enemy of our ability to learn and grow. As Epictetus put it, it is impossible for a person to begin to learn what he thinks he already knows. Today, we will be unable to improve, unable to learn, unable to earn the respect of others if we think we're already perfect, a genius admired far and wide. In this sense, ego and self-deception are the enemies of the things we wish to have because we delude ourselves into believing that we already possess them. So we must meet ego with the hostility and contempt that it insidiously deploys against us to keep it away, if only for 24 hours at a time. Cool. There's like an action item at the end of like try to do it for 24 hours at a time or something. Like keep it away. You know, keep the ego ego away. Is that what you're taking from this? Um, no, there's another one that I was thinking about, like how, like the first, the paradox here is like, when you think, you have, I have, I have this tendency to say, no, I, I've been working on my ego for a long time, dude. Like I'm trying to kill that thing. It's, it's almost dead. Yeah, of course, there's a little bit there, but, but you know, I'm good. That is the, that is the exact egoistic answer of thinking that you got this under control, that there is something to have under control or something. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a tricky, it's a tricky uh, route to unroot. If there is even such thing as unrooting some something like that, I think it's more like learning of how to be with it and mm, not be against it and not letting it uh, run your life. You know, some like let it be there because it's like seeing it, seeing it from the perspective of mm, it's part of me and and I embrace it, but also hey, let's not. Let's not let this 
uh, a pit bull run around neighborhood without a leash, you know, type of a situation. Like, hey, you got to be on the leash with me here and don't bite anyone. And let's train <laughs> so we don't bite anyone. So I don't know, something something in those lines. How, yeah. how like we kid ourselves that we are already okay. We are already not egoistic. We're good. Mm. But like, no, we're, we really need to look in there and see how... Wow, that's not really accurate. Yeah. And I like what Ryan said about that when you sort of think I already know this, I don't need to learn it. Then you actually close yourself off from taking in more mm-hmm. knowledge that could help mm-hmm. you, that could produce mm-hmm. the outcomes that you're actually looking for. Mm-hmm. Because if you're the type of person who cares about your ego and, and self-deception in this way, you you care because you want those better outcomes, but then somewhere along the line, there's that the ego comes back again saying I'm good I I read if I read enough books I listened to enough people talk about this I meditated enough I I checked off all of these boxes enough therefore things are great. But then you look at the outcomes in your life and you're like, well, those are still not exactly where I'd like them to be. Mm-hmm. And then the, you, there's the reconciliation with like, oh, wait, here I am thinking that I know something. And I, I can tell that self-deception right away because as Robert Greene talked about in one of his videos, like nothing can ever be known with certainty. The only thing we can know is like probabilities, like it is human beings are probably like this the world is probably mm-hmm. like this it's not, reality not, is probably yeah, like nothing this. is like is absolutely is absolutely, is absolutely like this. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. absolutely be, be known, known yeah. and so if i think that i've absolutely mm-hmm. known something already well okay right there is the evidence that i'm mm-hmm. lying to you're myself kidding yourself. Yeah, yeah. You're kidding yourself yeah uh-huh. yeah Hmm. So action from this is to me is like, yeah, trying to notice when I'm kidding myself. Yeah, you know, you know I want to with, with like, hey, you already know this or or mm, I was also thinking about something like when when I want to speak mm. in like a meeting or like I have this I have where like somebody's talking and there's a question. Right. And I have this tendency of like, oh, like I know the answer. I want to answer this. Huh, me me right uh, or even school or even 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 meetings or something like that right um and like what what is that right like that that is something that i think that i already know and they don't know and others don't know i i know i know i'm gonna tell you what i know because i already know but i don't but i actually then i think about it further and i go well, do I actually know that? Well, no, that's my opinion of that thing that they're asking about. But I don't know that. I don't know 100% of how that's actually, how it actually is. It could be totally different ways. All of a sudden, people start talking like, hey, that's a, that's like 20% of what this is about. There's all this other stuff, right? And now I'm, now I'm like, wow, I thought I knew. But like, how many times do I answer thinking I am the one who knows? Interesting. So maybe it's it's like trying to make up more of a lifestyle practice of instead of emphasizing attention on the stuff I think I know. Mm-hmm. I'm taking this based off of what you yes, just said. Yes, yes. Um, instead of um, putting my attention on the stuff I think I know, which is very intoxicating because we all mm-hmm. want to feel super intelligent mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, mm, I'm so smart. I know things. Yeah, yeah. And so instead of thinking about all the things I know that make me feel good and pat myself on the back, maybe I should spend more time thinking about all the things I don't know. Like, where does my boundary mm-hmm. of knowledge stop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where are the blind spots within my mm-hmm. knowledge and where mm-hmm. and where the adjacent knowledge, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it blows my mind that like you can go so deep into yoga or project management and it's this whole world of vocabulary and theory and methodology and framework and history and on and on and on and on and on. And then I think that's how Robert Greene yeah, talks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on and on and on and on. 
Um, uh, what? I'm sorry, I just got so thrown off by that. Um, that there, that there's these, I'm using yoga and project management, but then I think to myself, holy crap, this is, there's like an infinite number of subject matter Mm -hmm. that's entirely more complex and complicated than those two areas that I don't even know exist. Right. Like how does like AI work? Yeah, and, a, and AI is something like I've, really like down to the right all exactly of those, in the rabbit hole. Rabbit holes and, right, and, right. and and even AI is something I've heard about, but there's right. things I haven't even heard right. about right. out there. Right, 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 right. That like sometimes you kind of like catch a, a, a you eavesdrop out in public, and somebody it sounds like they're speaking a foreign language, but like it's the, English. Like I was looking at that, uh, uh, like because I'm applying for these jobs, mm-hmm. so I was looking at this company, and they were doing like gene editing or something, and right. just like reading about like that world is just like wait what what is going on in there like yeah. it's just like well and then and then after all of that that now you're ready to do all of this it's just like you know there's like hey you do all of these things and now you're ready for all of these things right and it's not it's like super i mean maybe it's not so complex but um yeah, it's like multiple layers deep of like understanding of how that thing even like works on surface. So I, how much deeper this goes in, in there is amazing. Yeah. That's cool. I'm going to start, I'm going to see if I can do something to think more about how much I don't know and appreciate how much I don't know and respect how much I don't know. Because I think that's also the humility Mm. that um, I am kind of seeking more humility in my life. Mm -hmm. And I want to maybe look at it like, like it's like something like a discovery, like, wow, like something like a positive discovery. When I don't know something, like when I discover, oh man, I don't know that. I need to learn that. That should be like, I found already something. The Exciting. nugget, the nugget that what I, the whole of what I don't know. Mm. And then you go, oh, wow, I have this little nugget that I can write down and say, go learn about this. Like, because you know, normally you might encounter new information. And you're kind of like, be like irritated, like, oh, this is another thing I don't know. This yeah. is so much. I'm stupid. Yeah, or all of now that. you go into the other ego area, <laughs> the ego area of I know everything to the ego area of I know nothing. Oh. And so you're just moving, you're special good or special bad. And so I think if you play more in that area, you're playing more with like the reality of the situation. You're not thinking about yourself as good or bad. You're just, you're just here and present and, and, and aware of the fact that you are not the center of this whole thing. (laughs) Yeah. No, just two eyes to look at it from this angle. Cool. (laughs) Let's go for a hike. Let's do it talk about stuff we don't know. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow.